Cyberpunk has been an excellent exercise in why we can't trust the community. So there have been a lot of really interesting points brought up by the Cyberpunk player base, where some people found, for example, that hex edits can legitimately improve the performance for AMD Ryzen CPUs, some of them, in Cyberpunk 2077. Now there's a patch version 1.05 that also does this in an official capacity, but we've tested both. We started testing with the hex edit mod before the patch came out, and then we added the patch as soon as it came out. The reason that goes from really cool discovery from the community to can't trust the community for anything is because the uh, proportion to which the mod was exploded was not accurate to what it was doing. So a lot of people thought that AMD Ryzen CPUs universally, all of them, would have some massive 30% uplift just by doing a hex edit. And that's simply not true. And we're proving that today. There was also this widespread belief that a CSV, which actually did nothing, would have an impact to memory utilization on the video card and in the system memory to the extent that there were multiple versions of the CSV with different memory settings pre-typed into them available on Nexus mods unaffiliated with us. So we're looking at those things today along with patch 1.05 for Cyberpunk 2077 specifically for CPU performance. Actually pretty interesting. Before that, this video is brought to you by Drop and the new Drop Enter mechanical keyboard. The Drop Enter 10 keyless mechanical keyboard uses an aluminum housing underside to provide rigidity when typing, and top side, it uses smooth gator on yellow or tactile Halo True switches. Drop offers this smaller keyboard in black, white, and two-tone black-green, and calls it a beginner mechanical keyboard for soon-to-be enthusiasts. Learn more at the link in the description below. So, healthy serving of salts from us aside, just because, well, you do a lot of hard work, and then there's a bunch of immediate comments about you need to test XYZ because someone on Reddit said it does a 30% uplift. Uh, salt aside, there are places where the mod helped, definitely for the hex edit. Just some threads were not getting utilized well, and we'll show that today in the content in 1.04 and prior for Cyberpunk 2077. 1.05 fixes that, we'll look at that as well. And then the mod fixed it, but it only really applies to a couple CPUs. So uh, the 3300X is an example where at 1080p low, for example, you'll see uh, a larger, more noticeable uplift. And those are the types of scenarios where that higher percentage uplift claim originally came from before it was blanket applied to every CPU that exists. Uh, additionally, in scenarios where you have a 5600X, you're less likely to see an influence from the changes, but we'll go over that. There are scenarios where, again, 1080p low, you'll see an impact, but as soon as you become sufficiently GPU bound and you are no longer thread bound, then the, the fact that some of the threads aren't being utilized matters a lot less. When you hit that point will depend on the CPU and GPU combination, of course. And then finally, the eight core and above CPUs are not affected at all by patch 1.05, but we'll go through that later in the piece and uh, talk about the official CDPR updates more there. For the updates for 1.05, let's read those before we get into the benchmarking. So CDPR officially wrote the following. It said, uh, quote, AMD SMT optimized default core and thread utilization for four core and six core AMD Ryzen processors. 8-core, 12-core, and 16-core processors remain unchanged and are behaving as intended. This change was implemented in cooperation with AMD and based on tests on both sides, indicating that performance improvement occurs only on CPUs with 6 cores and fewer. Uh, CDPR also said the following, removed the memory underscore pool underscore budgets.csv file, which was not connected with the final version of the game and had no influence on it. It was a leftover file used during development to estimate memory usage. It had no effect on how much memory was actually being allocated. Proceeds performance increase after editing the file may have been related to restarting the game. And this is why, again, the, the numbers you'll see posted uh, just by random users who've tried things, it's cool, it's fine to do that. We definitely encourage it. Uh, but if there aren't a lot of controls in place, it's really easy to get bad data. And that's what CDPR is talking about here. So we'll talk about this in the piece too, where CPU testing this game specifically has been a bit of a nightmare. It's required a lot of retesting from us and a lot and a, a, like a ton of throwing away bad data. And uh, that's just because the game seems to have some run to run variation issues. And we'll show some of those, but definitely a run to run variation problem. It is possible to get consistent data, but it does require, well, it, what it really requires is multiple CPUs, which most people who are just testing a game patch obviously don't have because they're just doing it as an enthusiast, hey, here's A versus B, and that's awesome. But 
once you have multiple CPUs and you start socketing different ones in, you go, wait a minute, it doesn't make sense for this CPU to perform like 3300X. That makes zero sense here whatsoever. Let's look into it. And that's where you start to discover the run-to-run -run variation issues that, that we ran into uh, and resolved for all of our numbers before we published them. But today, we're going to publish the invalid results as well, just to give you an idea of what was going on behind the scenes and what's still going on with the game if you just benchmark it without a lot of caution and, and a lot of distrust in your own data. That's really required to get accurate numbers from Cyberpunk is distrust in your own work, which is unfortunate, but they'll improve it with time. But one last update before we get into the benchmark. So they also said removed the use of AVX instructions, thus fixing crashing occurring at the end of the prologue on uh, processors not supporting AVX. So that's an important one as well, but not one we'll be benchmarking today. Okay, let's get into it. We did a completely fresh run of 1440p medium results for the 5600X, the 3300X, and then also added additional test runs for the 5900X without mods. We did these tests multiple times because there were some consistency issues that we think are maybe related to the game, but we'll go over those consistency issues later in this piece. Those we think are also a large part of the reason why people seem to think that their CPUs have sometimes larger gains than are possible because of testing variants. So these are not necessarily the same as the original test passes in the CPU benchmark, and that's due to game updates and some slight methodological changes. We ran these new results back to back. We have plenty to work with to determine whether the mod does anything, and you'll see them marked as hex or as run two. Here, the R5600X with the hex edit ran 120 FPS average, with lows at 92 and 76 for 1% and 0.1%. The unmodded 5600X also did 120 FPS average, so nothing changed. The lows are marginally better, but because of the wider standard deviation for lows in this game, it's not in a way which is necessarily outside of variance or error. It's certainly not noticeable to a human, anyway. For everyone spamming our comments about how we should modify the game into a non-stock, not out-of-the-box configuration that most people won't use uh, because it would produce some magical 30% uplift, this is your answer. No, it doesn't. Not universally, anyway. There's one scenario where there's uplift, and that's in the 3300X with some combinations of game settings. We'll get to that momentarily. However, the bulk of the comments were people thinking that all AMD Ryzen CPUs would just universally rocket 30% in average frame rate, and that's simply not true. This would only make sense for the lowest end parts, as some of you pointed out, but not for the parts which are not already thread bound. Anywhere that is sufficiently loaded on the GPU, like these higher settings, will be bound first by the GPU, not by thread activity. Almost everybody who plays this game will be GPU bound. So the takeaway is that the results don't really change on the CPU side, except for in specific scenarios, like sometimes the 3300X. Anyway, back to the bar chart. As for the R33300X, that saw some movement. It ran at 92 FPS average in the retest, or 113 FPS average with the mod applied. This is where those claims of large gains came from, but, Again, don't be fooled into thinking this applies to every Ryzen CPU universally. What we need to look at is whether this resolved the stuttering, though, because as we showed in the original benchmarks, those stutters only really appeared in longer gameplay, not necessarily in benchmark passes. This was explained in the previous piece, but we'll go through it again here. Thus far, there is an apparent uplift in the recorded FPS in the chart for the 3300X at 1440p medium, but not the 5600X with these settings. Here's a plot of the thread activity for the stock configuration tested at 1440p medium. It's going to be a mess, but that's because we're plotting all of the threads. The 5600X threads are all over the place, but primarily core 1, T0, plunges regularly to 10% load, core 0, T1, core 2, T1, and core 5, T1, note that T1 on all three of those, sit below 10% utilization. That's three out of 12 threads down here. Again, this plot is a mess, but it'll be helpful when we switch to the next one, as long as you remember this general pattern. It'll become very clear what the difference is. Here's the modded thread activity on the 5600X. You can see that we no longer have any threads developing below 10% utilization, and specifically not those T1 threads, which would be the second of two on a core. We also have fewer spikes, though, to 90% or even 80% utilization throughout the test. In other words, our CPU was never pegged at 100% to begin with. So all that's happened here is the load is shifting around. But there wasn't any alleviation of the workload in a way that impacted the frame rate, as we showed previously. We won't bother plotting these, but the average CPU utilization of all of these numbers, uh, a simple unweighted arithmetic average of each chart, showed the original unmodded test at 43.6% average utilization across all cores, 
while the modded result showed 64.3 average utilization percent. Uh, again, though, some of those cores are going to be at 80, 90% in the unmodded version, and they might be at high 70s or 70% in the modded version. So it's not like it's 60 or 40% all the time. It's just the average of all of them. The mod clearly does something. It just didn't change the performance in game for this CPU with these settings. Also not plotted here, we measured an average frequency of 4578 MHz in the unmodded test or 4550 in the modded test. Some of that's due to thread loading differences and Precision Boost 2. So while the 5600X was obviously unchanged by the presence of the mod, and the 5900X would follow this behavior as with the 5950 and the 3600-3700X, other higher thread count parts, the 3300X deserves more of a look since it did improve. Here, the 3300X originally had several 80 to 90 millisecond frame times during a test run with some combat and driving involved. There was one spike to nearly 100 milliseconds. This is sharp enough to become noticeable. That's one-tenth of a second that you're looking at the same frame. The 3300X with the mod starts out smoother, with only a few spikes to 20 milliseconds and none initially to that 30 to 40 millisecond range. It eventually has some hits to 40 milliseconds and a few to 30 milliseconds later. But overall, it's clearly improved from the better load distribution. So to reiterate then, this mod actually does help with the 3300X in instances where it is not completely GPU bound and those who were saying that the mod would help with lower-end CPUs were correct. But anyone claiming that AMD Ryzen improvement overall would be 20-30%, that's not really the case. You would need to be fully thread-bound, like the 3300X is, in order for it to matter. As a final note here on the frame time plot, if you're not familiar with these, lower is better, but more consistent is best, and what you're looking at is a point-to-point -point or frame-by-frame -frame measurement of how long in time that current frame took to render and present to the viewer. Time to look at the thread activity for the 3300X. So we're back to the messy charts. Unlike the 5600X, the 3300X doesn't have enough CPU threads where some of them can do nothing without impacting performance at these lower settings. The stock performance keeps core zero T0 at 80 to 90% load, but then shows core zero T1 below 10%. Core one T0 is between the 60s and 80s with core one T1 middling. It's not as bad as Core 0 T1 or Core 2 T0, but it is plotting lower than the mod will show us. Here's the chart with the mod. We're seeing similar behavior as with the 5600X, except it's more meaningful at these fully CPU-bound settings like 1080p low. All of the cores follow roughly the same path, with the utilization occasionally brushing against 100% on Core 0 and 1. This also aligns with what we saw in the scaling headroom allowed from other CPUs in this test. Here's 1080p low. This is where we'd expect the most differences to emerge, even on higher end AMD parts, because we're becoming CPU bound. There's one key point to be made though. Although 1080p low is useful for CPU benchmarks, just like we said in the CPU benchmark piece, it's not really realistic to play at these settings, especially on these $300 plus CPUs. You probably have a GPU good enough to run at higher settings. And in a game like Cyberpunk, that's more likely the goal. It's probable that you'd be minimally at 1080p high with this type of configuration, if not higher resolution still, like 1440 or 4K, where the CPU mod becomes irrelevant on a 5600X, at least in our testing thus far. The 5600X shows a 15 FPS gain here from 150 to 166. That's about a 10% movement, but again, that turns to 0% at 1440p medium, which we already showed, so we wouldn't worry about it if you're more GPU bound, if you're running higher resolutions or a lower end GPU. The R3 3300X would be worth getting the mod though. We moved from 96 FPS average to 125, which is where people got that 30% figure, except they then posted it as a TLDR in comments that insinuated that Ryzen always got this boost. The 3300X shows a real improvement here in both average FPS and in 1% and 0.1% lows. The frame times have improved along with the average FPS, and so it's worthwhile on the 3300X, although we should note that we're not sure if there's any potential downside to the mod, but it seems to be running fine so far. Uh, and on the 5600X, it just really, once you're beyond 1080p low, artificially low settings, it doesn't really matter. The biggest problem we've run into in this game has been one of test consistency. Between full game restarts, we've noticed high variability that has been impacting the results and our ability to quickly collect them. It's meant a lot of wasted test passes, where some of the benchmarks now have 20 passes for one CPU and one graphics setting alone, but with half of those being thrown out. 
We normally just fix this and move on, but it became such an issue during our cyberpunk testing that we wanted to publish one example of the findings. We think that this may also be where some of the belief of performance uplift comes from. Users running a one-off test pass, for example, if you saw this mod on Reddit, you ran a quick buy eye test pass, you installed the mod and then you did it again, you would potentially be falling prey to thinking there's a change when there might not be just because of variation. Also, that's a terrible way to run tests anyway, but that's for other reasons. This shows some of the issues we had with the 1080p high settings. The 5600X plotted in the range of 134 to 137 FPS average, and that was in our first set of four passes, and then 125 to 128 in the next set. We then reran these tests a few more times and ended up determining that the original 134 to 137 FPS range is what we believe to be the correct one. But the troubling thing is that we never determined the source of variability from the lower result. We checked all the settings manually and none had changed and nothing was set to auto. And it's not like we don't have experience running benchmarks. There wasn't anything in the background either. All testing is done after restarting the game between changes as well, so this isn't it either. We also had issues at 1440p medium, where it briefly appeared as if the hex edit mod hindered performance, but after retesting, it came out the same as stock. That required five sets of four to five test passes each for the 5600X alone. Regardless of the source, we had to rerun things several times to get them consistent, for the bar charts that is, and we believe this could contribute to some of the community conceptions about performance characteristics. The game probably needs some work to smooth things over, and we'd be quick to blame the game rather than GPU drivers, for instance, just given the game's current status. Now, finally, we'll get into the update 1.05 changes. This rolled out in the middle of working on the other CPU content testing with the mod. In update 1.05, like we said in the intro to this piece, the CDPR team addressed the CPU and memory mods alike. CDPR made it clear that it had worked with AMD on validating potential for CPU uplift and that it had discovered a place for it to provide that uplift. In version 1.05, it implemented the changes that improved AMD CPU performance for Ryzen CPUs on fewer than eight cores. It also made it clear that the memory mods did nothing, so we won't bother looking into those separately. For thread balancing, this affects six core CPUs and below but will have no impact on the 5900X or 5800X or on last gen 3700X, for example. We also didn't see widespread changes on the 5600X despite it being affected, although in CPU bound scenarios like 1080p low, you would probably see one. You also might see one with the 3600 in scenarios that are more CPU bound. CDPR changed a lot more than just thread balancing on some of these CPUs. So this means that some of the improvement that we may see could be from other changes, like graphics changes, that we may not be privy to. It's not a like-for-like like version test, so the version itself will influence the results potentially beyond just the AMD CPU changes. Here's the earlier 1080p low chart that we showed, except now with the 1.05 result added for the 3300X. The 1.05 test put our 3300X at 124 FPS average. The modded result was 125, so these are basically the same. The lows are almost identical, it's more similar than we typically see, even run to run, on the same game version. So you can expect the results we saw from the mod applied to the 1.05 updates as well. We didn't bother rerunning the 5600X because of this. Uh, the 5900X would be completely unaffected by 1.05 beyond the other changes introduced by the game. So that may be a good baseline to determine what those may be, but it's not affected by the CPU updates. And then 5600X is uh, going to perform the same way as we saw with the mod versus without the mod, so there's no point in running it with 1.05. Just look at the mod numbers and that's what they are. At 1440p medium, we saw similar uplift to before. It plotted 3 FPS average below our modded result, but we suspect this is more tied to variance within the game than anything else. This is something that CDPR also explicitly called out in its patch notes. They noted run-to-run -run variance in testing was likely to cause the placebo benefits that people saw with the memory CSV. And we saw that in the earlier numbers that we showed you, where there was high run-to-run -run variance just by restarting the game. Uh, and that's without changing any graphic settings, by the way. It's not like we're changing stuff and then trying to test. We start with the settings we're going to use, and then that's it. So it's sometimes just starting the game, it runs better than others, and it looks like CDPR is aware of that.
And that's it for this one. Just a quick update really on the CPU benchmarks we did. So that includes the mod. Again, 1.05 came out after we did all the mod testing. So we figured out, well, let's, let's just hold the content and wait till it's available on PC, which it is now, and benchmark that as well. And it's the same. So 1.05 does the same thing in our testing as the mod did previously. Again, limited to six cores and below. Does not affect the eight, 16, or 12 core processors. And, uh, and that's a rise and change, not necessarily a widespread all CPUs change, but definitely rise in SMT is what we've tested and what CDPR states. So that's it for this one. It looks like the uplift is anywhere from, well, on higher end CPUs, it's meaningless. There won't be any really. And on a 5600X, which is a high end CPU, but on a sort of middle core count, six core part, 3600, 5600X, those you'll see an uplift in scenarios where you are completely CPU bound. Again, 1080p low, but if you're running at higher graphic settings, which is very likely in this game, then the impact of this 1.05 change or of the hex edits will be less compared to when you're CPU bound fully because you're bottlenecking on something else. So that makes sense. And then uh, for a 3300X or something like that, you should probably be just downloading 1.05 anyway because it fixes a lot of other bugs in the game. But if for some reason you were considering not doing it, you should do it because uh, the performance uplift at low settings with the 3300X is noteworthy and, uh, and definitely noticeable. And that's where those large 20, 30% numbers you saw came from originally was CPUs like that one. But if you're GPU bound, well, don't expect as much of a change. It all just depends on how you run the game and what components you have other than the CPU. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. As always, you can go to store.gamersnexus.net or patreon.com slash gamersnexus, and we'll see you all next time.